If you're going to be spending that precious time and energy job hunting and pulling together a resume, you might as well make sure it's a resume that stands out, cuts through the noise, and actually sounds different to what's out there. You want to make sure that it's a resume that's going to get you results. It's going to get you interviews. It's going to get you offers, really high quality ones in the shortest time frame possible. So let's focus together on the four key steps you need to take to write a perfect resume, one that's going to really impress recruiters, make hiring managers and decision makers say, yeah, they're the perfect fit, and just generally open a lot of doors for you. Hey, badass, and welcome back to the Badass Careers YouTube channel, where we help goal getters to figure out what they truly want out of their career and go out there and get it, equipping you with the strategy, the tools, the techniques, the skills you need to elevate your career and do work you love. Now, I've worked all around the world, several different industries, countries. I've recruited for every profession you can imagine. Sometimes I had recruitment scopes of over 45 different countries at any one time. Like, I have seen it all. And I can tell you that there are some very clear pillars of what makes a resume a good one versus something basic, something easily rejected and honestly something that just makes our eyes glaze over because it's just so boring. But the funny thing about me when I was recruiting, there was always two things going on. There was the recruitment itself and then because I'm such a psychology and neuroscience geek, there was always this analysis of what are these top tier candidates doing differently? Like what has clicked for them that means that they're submitting these high quality applications? And because I was working at times for some of the biggest companies in the world, some of the most successful groups and holdings, top Fortune 500 companies, it was very competitive and it would attract extremely high quality applications already as a base, but they were always the ones that still went that one step further. So here are the four steps that I think they were following to make sure that their resume ended up such a compelling, exciting marketing pitch to read. So step number one, before you even get writing your resume, you need to master the principle of designing your resume with the audience in mind. Most people will use their resume to sell themselves. It's kind of what it's there for, right? But the best candidates, they sell themselves in relation to the role they're going for, in relation to their audience. So the first step of all is really sitting with that job ad, really reading the company website, really understand why are they hiring this person, what explicitly do they need? And at the end of the day, what kind of leadership competencies are they looking for? Or culture fit are they looking for? What kind of strengths are they looking for in a person? And really put yourself in their shoes. What would make them say, yep, they've got it, the other one. And so what I know that my clients and those top tier candidates are doing differently is that they actually have one big document we call the master reference resume, the master reference document. And that's where you've got sort of everything you've ever done, all of your experiences, all of your volunteer, your side hustles, your languages, your technical skills, like everything you could imagine about yourself ready to go. But then what they do is that they very strategically pick and choose and tailor the message, the story, the pitch that they're creating so that every single part of that real estate on that resume, on that cover letter makes so much sense. So that when the recruiter opens it, that first impression is yes, 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 okay? So you wanna make sure every single part of that resume, everything that you include, makes sense for the role in front of you. This may influence which experiences you choose. So you don't actually have to put every experience you've ever had on your resume. You could just say career highlights or relevant experience and tailor that out. It may influence which technical skills you choose. It may influence the core strengths you choose or the leadership style that you choose to highlight. It may make you decide whether or not to include entire sections like personal projects, side hustles, volunteer gigs, languages you speak, because you have to ask yourself, as impressive as it is, is that impressive to them? Does that make a difference for them? Now, once you've done this beautiful groundwork, step number two is you want to choose a format that looks expensive. At the end of the day, humans are visual creatures and looks do matter, the aesthetics do matter. I know that you've probably experienced this as a consumer, for example, choosing a particular product off the shelf because it had really cool packaging 
or automatically been impressed by a brand because they had a really sleek website. Well, the same goes for your resume. And when you can get away from these clunky 1995 looking resumes that just look a little bit drab, a little bit dull, and you actually transform them into a resume that's sleek, that's modern. It could be one column, it can be two columns, but you can use free sites like Canva just as a base to build out really good looking, expensive looking formatted resumes. Because at the end of the day, if you can't make your own personal marketing pitch look good, how could they trust you to make slide decks look good or reports look good or internal presentations look good? Your resume is a sample of your work. Your resume is a sample of your communication skills, both written and visual. So while content will always be king, and I'm going to tell you exactly how to figure out what that content will be, you also need to know that the way it's presented and the way a recruiter is able to experience and consume the information, that also matters. And not only does research say that it matters, but I've had clients absolutely stuck with their resume, applying everywhere with these old formats because they were fear-mongered, saying that they won't get past the ATS and stuff like that online. And so they had these drab formats that were sending them out not getting any bites. And then you've got Valerie, for example, who transformed how sleek and professional she came across and she lands at Meta. Or Catherine, for example, who was a young graduate not getting any bites anywhere, who ended up landing at her dream brand, Cartier. And by the way, it's completely normal that she had a photo on her resume because she is based in France and that is the cultural norm in France, okay? So don't worry about the photo. And if you just wanna make your life easy on that point, go and look at our hand curated and designed templates that we've created. They're ATS optimized, meaning they get past the applicant tracking system at the biggest companies in the world, from Google to Meta to Microsoft, like no worries. And they are beautiful, professional looking. You will find resume and cover letter bundles, and you even get real life client examples for inspiration when you purchase those bundles and everything you need to make it, you know, one, two, three pages, depending on your level of experience. So go check those out as well if you're just looking for an easy plug and play solution that works. Now, now the next step in writing a perfect resume, we're getting into the content now, is making sure that none of your content is just fluff. And what I mean by fluff is that it's just words on a page without any proof point, without any evidence, without anything to back it up. I'm talking about skills tables where people just list like 12 skills, like leadership, project management, communication, Adobe Photoshop and things like that, or top skills and they just list out like 10 generic words. Those days are over, everyone's been doing that and it's like, well, how can I tell? How do I know that's true? How do I know that you're not just like claiming that and keyword stuffing this document? And so what I would say is that make sure that everything you have on your resume speaks to your high achiever energy. It's backed up with proof points, it's backed up with results, it's backed up with impact and accomplishments. And I'm gonna give you two concrete resume examples that do this beautifully. So the first example is this resume summary. So again, imagine a recruiter's first impression opening up a resume like this. Digital marketing and content specialist with six plus years of professional experience and a track record of elevating aspirational brands through pertinent organic and paid social media campaigns, building engaged communities and creating smart media. I've devised social strategies that saw growth of plus 81%, achieving blue tick status in my first month and implemented a grassroots global influencer network of 50 plus micro and macro profiles. Vivacious and authentic, I love proving the business value of branding actions and get a kick from delighting and engaging consumers with inspiring editorial in both English and French. Today, I'm seeking an international social media and comm strategy role at a digitally minded premium interior brand where I can level up their global ambitions and convert new brand super fans. So not only does this person come across as a fit and they're purpose driven and you see their motivators and you see their zones of genius and what they're excellent at without saying, I'm a really good marketer or I'm really good at this, they prove it, they back it up, they tell career stories and they share snippets of what they've done to portray this energy, this high achiever energy. So what these top tier candidates are doing is identifying which results and accomplishments they're really gonna sing about and really going to have represent them on their profile. Here's another example with a core strength section. Do you see how it's not just a list of generic skills? We're drawing out three core strengths here based on an analysis of the job ad and the job description. 
and we're backing it up with storytelling. Now this person highlights purpose-driven collaboration, connected communications, and authentic connection. And those just alone could be buzzwords, but what they do is they back it up with proof points. For example, innovative and empathy-led problem solving and project management has enabled me to launch 25 plus new food products and 10 plus nutrition articles globally in collaboration with highly talented, diverse professionals within seven years in the global food industry. So it's not fluff, it's real estate well spent. It's allowing them to sing about the core pillars that make them them and back it up with so much celebration and pride without any empty claims or just like, yeah, I'm great. No, it's just a fact. It's not bragging friends if it's a fact. Now on this note, if you are someone who struggles with knowing what makes you you, what your unique essence is, what your personal brand is, what your things are, what your zones of genius are. If you know that you could do a little bit of work in terms of that self-awareness, I highly recommend watching my full-length workshop, Dream Job Magnet. Now in Dream Job Magnet, it's completely free and I walk you through the elements and the importance of building a personal brand to stand out, aka leveraging who you are and what makes you different to really stand out and how to market that and communicate that and articulate that. So if you've ever felt like you don't have anything really special to offer or you don't think that you sound different to any other person applying to the job with your years of experience and your degree, then absolutely check out this workshop because it doesn't only cover how to construct a personal brand, but then how to link that into your resume, your cover letter and your LinkedIn so that all of these incredible opportunities are coming your way. Now the fourth next step in pulling together a perfect resume is the cut and the polish. Again, every millimeter of this marketing document needs to count. Every millimeter needs to be selling you, convincing the recruiter to put you out there, to pitch you for the role, and to give you a shot and to meet you and to interview you. And so you just wanna go through with a fine tooth comb and make sure that every single sentence on that document hits again for this company and this role. And while this may sound like a lot of work, it is. The badass way, the way that's getting people these incredible career moves and pay raises and insane offers at companies they never thought they could get into is because they do this work with a handful of applications versus sending out a hundred applications. You kind of tweak a few words and just like cross your fingers and give it a go. Okay. So it's more work, but you apply to less things and you get more interviews as a result. So when I say cut and polish, it means removing any waffle, removing any words that don't need to be there, anything that's superfluous, anything that is you know, saying the same thing twice, just making sure it is so succinct. You wanna make sure you don't have too many experience bullets under each role. You wanna make sure that your experience bullets are reflective of the attention you want the recruiter to give them. So, you know, maybe a big role that's super important for proving your ability to do this next role in front of you, that might have eight bullets, but the next one down, which is far less relevant, might only have two or three, and that's okay. Any wasted real estate, like the sentence, references upon request needs to go, because obviously, any technical skills that aren't relevant or are super obvious, like Microsoft Word, like everyone knows how to use that, you know, and it hasn't specifically been called out in the job ad, that can go. Any wasted space on things like what your ex company did, you know, explaining in a little sentence like, this company does this and this, no, just hyperlink to your company's about page, gone. And I wish I didn't have to say this, but it's just so problematic and so common. Spell check, my friends. Install the free browser extension Grammarly, get them to bring up any spelling mistakes, any, any passive sentences, waffle, they'll underline it for you. Make sure it's well written and make sure that there aren't any mistakes because it's such a shame when someone says that they have attention to detail, for example, and then, you know, the spelling lets them down or there's errors in the document. So they can come across as, you know, really exciting as a profile, but if this one page or two page already has a few errors in it, how many errors are gonna be in their day-to-day -day work? You just can't trust them, sadly. And then you just wanna put all those little finishing touches on, like hyperlinking to your email address and hyperlinking to your LinkedIn profile and saving the document even with your name, first name, last name, and the role you're going for. All of those little pieces of attention to detail will matter to the recruiter. They give off the impression that you do high quality work and you're across it, you're onto it, you're detail oriented, and 
You've had time to think about your consumer, aka the recruiter, and making their life easy too. So friends, those are the four big steps you need to be taking to make sure your resume is written in a way that's going to stand out and land in the pile of yes, let's interview them, let's meet them, because this person feels like a perfect fit. As always, I would love to hear from you in the comments, what resonated with you, what are you going to take away and try out, do you have any questions based on what we've talked about today, I'm here for you, and otherwise, good luck, I'm sending you all the job offer vibes, and I will see you in the next video where we're going to continue this quest to make sure that you are doing fulfilling well-paid work that you love see you next time